Thank you, Honorable Member. Sanjeev Bhattari. Good evening, Mr. Speaker. I rise to offer my humble contribution on Budget 2023. In these debates, and, to, and permit me immediately to extend congratulations to Dr. Ashni Singh. I wish to offer my warmest congratulations to the Senior Minister in the Office of the President with responsibility for finance and his team for their hard work in compiling the 2023 budget. Mr. Speaker, the previous speaker, Mr. Sinclair, made mention of the school in Cato. Maybe he can tell us that when was it completed? I can help him with the answer. It was completed under the APNU AFC. There were defects. The people there wanted to know why, although the school was within the defects period, there was no defects liability period, there was no claim to have it fixed. So Mrs. Sinclair has disappeared. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this budget is about growth. It has been a clear message from His Excellency the President, and as we have heard over the last four days from the members of cabinet, this budget is about doing not only the big things, it's about doing the small things in each community and doing those things at every level. It seeks to build infrastructure whilst at the same time improving the lives of its citizens. It seeks to increase the standard of living of every Guyanese. In the short term, it hopes to improve that standard of living, while at the same time taking care of what would be the longer term. So that's why we need to do the transformational infrastructure projects. Mr. Speaker, just to name a few from the budget itself, the, the short term, the adjusted salary, for 5,000 healthcare workers, 9,000 disciplined service at a cost of $3 billion. The increase in the tax threshold from 75,000 to 85,000. 12,000, the cash grant increased from 25,000 to 35,000, which incidentally benefits approximately 214,000 children. This adds, of course, to the 5,000 uni uniform grant. The excise tax is reduced to zero. 17 billion that will cost in revenue collection. Reduced freight charges are extended for another year. Part-time work is extended and a further 10 billion is committed to that. Pensions are increased at a cost of 28 billion. Public assistance is increased. The Low, the mortgage ceiling is increased from 15 million to 20 million. Mr. Speaker, these projects and measures are based on sound economic policy, sound economic philosophy. Mr. Speaker, we all know that there could be several economic philosophies and policies, but these policies are set to build the foundation of our country and the foundation upon which our country is going to be built. It is about balance, Mr. Speaker, balancing the task of the immediate needs while providing for the security of future generation and future needs. Make no mistake, Mr. Speaker, Guyana is a poor country trying to find its way with its resources to prosperity. 
The development of Guyana, Mr. Speaker, with this budget is underway. The allocation of resources is such that it is balanced. It provides relief immediately to the citizens while provides the infrastructure to take us into the future. Mr. Speaker, Guyana is not immune from the economic issues of the world. Inflation, supply challenges, high cost of shipping, these are all immediate measures which are being dealt with by the measures in the budget. Now, in terms of what will be for the future, the 2023 budget will provide for a Demerara River Bridge, a Northwest Ferry, East Bank Highway, Burbies Highway, hospitals, the Linden Suzdike Highway, Linden to Mabura Road, and the Gas to Shore and Energy Project. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the public comments of the leader of the opposition, who is of course not here, and members of the opposition, that this has nothing for them. And his colleagues coming here for the past four days and preaching about friends and families and supporters. The Honorable Miss MacDonald said that this morning. Does the Honorable Member Miss MacDonald, Miss Ferguson, the leader of the opposition, they don't know anyone that will use these roads and are using these roads. They don't know anyone that will need the river bridge, nor do they cross the bridge. They have no intention of using any of the energy from the gas to energy project. Mr. Speaker, the thinking is like that. And you may wonder whether the leader of the opposition might very well be a bungalow. Mr. Speaker, our leaders in the government have taken a prudent and responsible part for the framework and the, develop, the development framework of our country. This is the preferred part. And there are other parts, as I had mentioned, Mr. Speaker. Allow me to highlight those possible parts by telling you about a fictional place called Bam Bam Alley. This is a mythical place, Mr. Speaker. It is characterized by professors who expose a unique philosophy. Its principal motto seems to be, growth is not economic development, and economic development is not growth. As preposterous as that would seem, to us mere reasonable mortals. It recommends itself and characterizes its fiscal management by the use of blank checks. We pray, Mr. Speaker, that this fictional place doesn't ever take root in the real world. The Bam Bam Ali philosophy is to ignore every fact they only deal with rumors and innuendos. Perhaps inspired by this philosophy, we have heard repeatedly the call for feasibility studies. The poster child of feasibility studies, the Honorable Member Mr. Patterson spoke this morning. In the last administration, while the Honorable Member was a minister, a feasibility study persuaded him about a bridge across the Demerara River with three lanes. A grown man who went to school and university managed to have someone persuade him that your best option for your people is a three-laned bridge. We all know every bridge everywhere in the world are in even numbers. But no, the philosophy is that we should have 
a three-lane bridge. As if that were not enough, we spent more than $100 million of taxpayers' money for that advice. 160, thank you, Attorney General. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, in the vein of the poster child of feasibility studies, a feasibility study was commissioned that said to the people of Guyana, you cannot have a refinery. You are not worthy. A refinery, as we all know, there is a public advertisement for a request for proposals, and Guyana will certainly have its refinery. The Bam Bam Ali economic philosophy, Mr. Speaker, it's dangerous. To reach the apex and pinnacle, it appears you must be a bungalow. Mr. Speaker, you might ask why a bungalow? There is no upstairs on a bungalow. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member, Mr. Jordan, speaks about things he does not know, such as apartheid, and he lectures about roads in Region 5. He fails to tell this House that there were no roads in Region 5 between, during the time of the APNU government. Mr. Sherwin Holder, the Honorable Member, an exponent of the school, and a constant preacher of racism and hate, seems to have forgotten, under the last administration, the favorite contractors were Mr. Larry Singh, a bond that held nothing except condoms and, and lube. Lloyd Singh, Hardat Singh. Uh, I know there are many thousands of Lloyd Singhs and Hardat Singhs. So we have a standing order that says we shouldn't call people named who can't defend themselves. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Speaker, but we don't want to forget the letter that was written for a particular contractor to be paid $1.8 billion for the Hags Bosch. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Mr. Holder did not notice anything about race then. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member Mr. Jordan spoke about the allegation, the allocation of health and the drugs. When we speak, Mr. Speaker, we must speak of the record. The record for material the material management unit in the Ministry of Health shows that just under 50% of the drugs were supplied to Region 5. And today, it exceeds 85%, Mr. Speaker. It appears a particular drug by the name of Petidine is never short in Region 5. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Speaker also spoke, that is Mr. Jordan, about the x-rays being down. He didn't tell us about the repeated written requests for maintenance under the APNU government. And he doesn't tell you that there are new digital x-rays that are procured in 2022 in Mahika, Maikoni, Fort Wellington, digital ultrasound. We speak of the process, Mr. Speaker, but we like to take only half of the story. The honorable member made no mention absolutely none. And if he had looked in last year's budget, he would have discovered Trafalgar Health Center was allocated 1.6 million, and it was used to improve that health center. Number seven health center, 2.1, which was used. Dundee, Strat Campbell, Belladrum, Baibu Health Center, Britannia, Experiment Health Center, Ithaca, Mora, Rosignol, Woodley Park. These are all contained in last year's budget. 
And these were the allocations made, Mr. Speaker. The more, the honor of a member who wants to say they're not completed needs to read the reports. Now, Mr. Speaker, the member spoke about a river ambulance it was for Marakabai. He didn't tell this house that in 2019, the APNU government made an upfront payment of $26 million for a river ambulance for that community. And that ambulance has to this day not been delivered. It is still being in Letem. Mr. Speaker, since this government took office, the Marakabai Health Center has a modern 4x4 ambulance. The same community is able to transport patients to Linden with efficiency, and there is also a new ambulance for the Maikoni Hospital. Mr. Speaker, it is important that we understand that when members come and speak in this house and pluck ideas about what they require to be in agreement with the budget. The honorable member who spoke yesterday, Mr. Sears, is it? He said that he thought must be the Bambam Ali Economic School of Philosophy. He thought that $1 billion should be allocated to the Wisma Bridge, used by approximately 900 people a day. Now, Mr. Speaker, in excess of 30,000 one way on the Demerara Harbor Bridge. Mr. Speaker, this is what leadership is about. And this is what we need to understand leadership is about. It's about having a budget and making decisions. Making decisions for the population. Everything can't be done. It's like managing any institution or household. You have to prioritize and spend your money on what comes first. Bam, bam, your time is up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask my honorable colleague be given time to conclude his presentation. Thank you, Honorable Minister Tashira. Honorable Member, you may proceed to conclude in five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when the projects that have been provided for in Budget 2023 are looked at, you can see across the board, Mr. Speaker, the infrastructure works that are going to last a long time, but they are needed. We have seen, every Guyanese citizen has seen, everywhere a road is built within six months, the two sides of that road, you see the development taking place. You're on, you're, Mr. Speaker, it is required the government's obligation is to provide the roadways and the pathways to our vast land. And if we want to develop that land, we have to allow people easy access. Hence the reason highways are required. Hence the reason bridges are required. Because what that does, it has a knock-on effect. What happens is as long as access is secured, then the development, private citizens and private entrepreneurship can develop those land to produce businesses that will be to the benefit of the entire nation. Mr. Speaker, part of what we must do here is not play games with the truth. Don't say that you care about the people, that you want them to have all of the increases that you speak of, but you never did it. 
don't say that you want to improve their lives when you tax them to debt for five years. You went after things that nobody knew existed. You had to get a license to ride a bicycle. You needed a license if you had more than two dogs. Things that have never cost a citizen before, you maliciously not only went after taxing them, you raised those taxes on what should be paid. In 2020, with the return of the PPPC government, Mr. Speaker, that was thankfully, thankfully reversed. Mr. Speaker, allow me to say to the Honorable Minister, Dr. Ashni Singh, that we thank him for his hard work. We support the budget. We support the measures in the budget. And Mr. Speaker, I do humbly commend this budget to the House for passing. Thank you very much, Honorable.